Okay, so in the last uh, video, I derived the velocity in polar in polar coordinates, and then if you did your homework, you would get the acceleration in polar coordinates, and that's what that is. So now I want to show you how you could possibly use this. So let's look at the very common idea of a pendulum. Uh, and let's call this a length L. The string's a length L, and it's at some angle theta, just like that. So the first thing we want to do with any problem is draw the forces on that diagram. So I only have two. I have the tension. And strings do this cool thing where they can only pull in the direction of the string. They can't push. So the direction of the string is the direction of the tension force. And near the surface of the Earth, the gravitational force is constant and straight down. OK, so if that's my acceleration, then I can write, if I did this in Cartesian coordinates, I would say this. I would say the sum of the forces in the x direction equals mass times acceleration in the x. The sum of the forces in the y is mass times acceleration in the y. So I'm doing it in polar coordinates. I want to do the same thing. And this is not the way to do it, because you can see that as this thing swings down, this force is going to change directions. And the, there's a problem with the tension. You say, OK, fine, but gravity is constant. But the problem is we don't really want to deal with tension because it's a force of constraint. It tells us not what that value is. That value is constrained by making this move in a uh, circular path. Okay. So it's kind of difficult to deal with. If I want to deal with just the uh, theta direction, it would be much easier. Okay. Actually, this is, so this will be theta hat, and this will be r hat. So instead, I want to write the sum of the forces in the r direction is going to be mass times acceleration in the r direction, r double dot minus r theta dot squared. And the sum of the forces in the theta direction is going to be mass times r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot. Okay. Now, before I start putting in things into that equation, um, in, in particular the sum of the forces, I do know one thing. If this is staying in a circle, then r equals l. So r dot is going to be 0. r double dot is equal to 0. So that's going to make things a little bit easier. Let's write down the sum of the forces in the r direction, even though we, we're not going to need it. Okay? But I'm going to write it down anyway. So in the r direction, I have two forces. I have tension pulling that way, which is the negative r direction. But it's all in the r direction. So the sum of the forces in the r is going to be negative tension. And then I have gravity pulling that way, but only a part of it. If that angle is theta, that angle is theta. So I want the adjacent side. So this is going to be plus mg cosine theta. And now that's going to be equal to m. r double dot is 0. So I get m times l theta dot squared. So that's, one, that's an equation that if I knew, if I knew the angular speed, I could find the tension and the angle. Okay, which is your classic introductory physics problem where they give you this and say, "What's the tension in the string at this particular point?" You could do that. Okay. Uh, so, but that's not that interesting. Instead, let's do the theta direction. Some of the forces in the theta direction is going to be. Now, I only have one force. I have. Gravity is partly in the theta direction. The tension doesn't act in the theta direction at all. It's perpendicular to that. So this is going to be the opposite side. It's this part. So it's going to be negative mg sine theta. Negative because if I call that theta, that would be the direction of increasing theta. So theta hat's that way. The gravitational component's this way. Uh, and so now over here, I get the acceleration is going to be m times r theta double dot, which is just going to be l times theta dot double dot, to r dot is 0. So I get m l theta double dot. OK, so now I have an equation that's pretty easy. The mass cancels. I can solve this for theta double dot. Negative g over l sine theta. And that's your differential equation. Okay. Um, 
that says there's some function, I take the derivative of it twice, and I get negative sine theta back. Um, yeah. The, the easiest way to solve this is to make the approximation that theta is very small, so sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. And in that case, I get theta double dot equals negative g over l theta. And this you may re uh, recognize as the same form as simple harmonic motion. Okay, so what could I, I take the derivative of this twice and I get uh, negative g over l times f, or negative l over g, because that will be on the other side. Okay, so the solution to this, you could guess, is uh, a series, a sum of the sine and cosine. So let me just erase this. So if I guess theta as a function of t equals a sine omega t plus b cosine omega t, when I take the derivative of this twice, I get omega squared sine omega t, negative omega squared sine omega t. And the same thing over here, I get negative b omega squared cosine omega t. So if I take the derivative of this twice, I get theta double dot of t is going to be equal to omega, negative omega squared theta. So that means that omega squared has to be equal to uh, g over l. Yeah, I did it right the first time. I always get that backwards, I don't know why. Okay, but what about A and B and how do we find those? This, when I have something like this, I need to apply initial conditions. So let's say that uh, my pendulum started from rest at an angle of uh, theta zero, and I, and I released it from rest. So that means at t equals zero, I know that since it's from rest, I know theta dot equals zero. I release it from rest. So theta dot is going to be equal to negative a omega, no, I'm sorry, positive a omega cosine omega t minus b omega sine omega t. Now, but if I put in uh, t equals zero, because this is at, I said at rest, at least at rest at t equals zero. At t equals zero, then I could put in t equals zero. Uh, cosine, why did I get this backwards? This is so early in the morning, I don't know why. Okay, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so cosine of zero is one. So if I put in zero for t, I get one. If I put in zero for that one, I get zero. So this gives me a omega, that's it, equals zero. So omega is not zero, so a has to be zero. So that means that uh, I, know, I know b. So now I can put in, I know that this is zero. And I know theta of t equals b cosine omega t. Um, now I can put in theta of zero equals theta zero. And I can put in, I know that's zero. So it's going to be b cosine omega t. It doesn't seem right, but I'm going to go with it. That would say b is theta zero. Hmm. That should be the amplitude. Yeah, I think that's right. That'd be the amplitude. Yeah. Okay. So I may have made a mistake. I accept that. But I think really this is the most important part that we can use this to find uh, a differential equation, and then we can solve. We're going to practice this more later. Okay, that's good.